Hi, thanks for listening in today. I'm Narissa Holder Hall, senior producer at Pinna, an audio streaming service with stories, game shows, and podcasts for kids ages three to 12. We have over a thousand things to listen to, and we're always adding new shows. Out of all of our audio shows, I am excited to talk about one show in particular today called Opal Watson, Private Eye. Opal Watson is a mystery series featuring an 11-year-old girl who has a knack for solving mysteries and who happens to be living with retinitis pigmentosa. Over the course of the series, Opal goes from being a girl who prefers to play it safe to one with the confidence and skills to try new and exciting things and explore new places. Here's a clip from the show. You spy, Opal? Footsteps, someone's coming down the stairs. Are you really going to take this case? Cover me, I'm going in. Come along on a mysterious adventure. Interesting, very interesting. With Opal Watson. I can hear all these stories swirling everywhere. Private Eye. I can't see anything. Opal, believe in yourself. We've got to open it. One, two, three! Her assignments aren't easy. You want a case? Uh, no. I mean, maybe. You sure you want to go in there? I don't think we have much choice. This is what we detectives call a hostile witness. But she's always up to the challenge. You got something special inside you, Opal Watson. Private Eye. Now streaming on Pinna. I gotta go. I may have a lead. Today, I'll be talking to the star of the show, Maya Graves, about her experience. Hi, Maya. Thanks for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. It's nice to see you. Yeah, I've missed you. It's been, what, five months since I've last seen you? Well, in person, I mean. What have you been doing for the past few months? Nothing interesting. My entire school has gone online, and it's hard for me because, well, I take chorus classes at school, and I, it's it's hard to learn the new song without anyone else helping. Because usually I learn songs like in the big group, like with all the different voice sections, but now I'm just singing by myself, and I don't have the other people in my section to help me. That sounds kind of tough, Maya. Is there anything about the way schools moved online that is surprisingly better or good? Oh yeah, I get to stay in bed late, and the best part is I can lie down in bed between classes because I do my because I do class in my room. That sounds great, Maya. So. We're going to talk today a little bit about your experience making the podcast, Opal Watson, Private Eye. Let's start at the beginning, Maya. Can you tell us how you got the role of Opal? And for those of you in the audience, um, Maya and I attend the same church in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. And I guess we could say Maya was discovered one day during a Sunday service. Can you tell us what you were doing that Sunday, Maya? Yeah, so um, every now and then, the kids in the Sunday school at that church get to lead the service. I was asked to do the benediction, sort of like the parting message at the end of the service. From what my mom told me, you, um, you were in the audience and you thought I had a good voice, is that right? Yes, you stood up and you spoke with such a clear and true voice that I got goosebumps and I knew you would be perfect for the role. Of course, to be fair, I knew that you needed to audition like everyone else. And since you had never thought about acting before, what made you decide to audition for the role when your mom told you I was interested in hearing from you? I wanted to try something new and I thought it'd be fun. And I was right, it was really fun. So can you tell us about that auditioning process? What did you have to do to get the role of Opal? Well, I got an email with a few lines and I had to record myself saying those lines. And did you make the recording on your own or did someone help you? I had a little help from my mom, like how to act, like if I should act exhausted or energetic and or stuff like that. Um, But the recording itself, I did by myself. Then I sent it in, and this is the best part. I was at school one day, 
and it was dismissal time, which means that there were students everywhere and the hallways were packed as usual. I have permission to take the elevator. Um, so I was in the elevator when my phone rang. I thought I was gonna be in trouble because we were supposed to put our phones in our lockers and I was with teachers in the elevator. So I answered the phone and it was my mom and she said, hello, may I speak to Opal Watson? I almost fell down. I was so shocked that I actually got it. That's amazing, Maya. That's a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing. Natasha Tarpley, the writer of the series, and I had a lot of fun creating the character of Opal. How was your experience playing Opal? It was interesting. It was it was really fun at times, but at other times a little bit annoying because Opal and I are really different characters. She's a lot more timid than I am. And it was really hard to um, to play scared in episode one because I wouldn't have been scared. Yeah, so there were a lot of differences. What yes. were the things you had in common with Opal? We are both African-American and we're both blind, but I think I have a little bit more vision than she does. Can you tell us about the experience of creating the special sound effects for Opal's white cane? Oh, that was interesting. The man who worked at, um, the man who, um, at the computer. Questar Welsh. Yes, him. Uh, he, um, he put a, um, a board, a wooden plank or whatever, down on the floor and I, um, and I tapped my cane on it. Oh, don't forget, for one of the sound effects, I had to eat potato chips in front of the mic. That was fun. Anyway. What was your favorite part of the process? Oh, the satisfaction of like when when it was like when we were all done and when you all put it together, the satisfaction of um, of going on pin it and then see, and then hearing my voice on there. That was it was all worth it. That must have felt amazing. What was it like hearing the show for the very first time? I was so excited. It was crazy. And I admit, I showed it off to every to, like a whole lot of people. I guess I might have been bragging just a little, but you can't really blame me. No, I can't blame you at all. And what did your family say the first time they heard the series? Uh, my mom was really happy for me. She was really proud. I listened on my own, then I went up to show my mom, because I was listening to it like here in the living room. And then I went up to show my mom, because she was in her room. She was really proud of me. I don't, I don't remember exactly what she said. It was a while ago, but... Um, I remember she was really proud of me, and yeah, it was really it was really enjoyable. What has been the most surprising thing about this whole experience, Maya? I thought I'd see the rest of the cast more, but I only saw them that one day of recording and the cast party. I thought I'd be recording with everybody else more. I wanted to get to know the people better. So we're writing season two of the show. <gasps> really? Oh, finally! So I can gauge a little bit from your reaction to that news, what your answer to the next question will be, but how are you feeling about going back into the studio, Maya? I'm so, so excited. I can't wait. Well, thank you again, Maya. It's lovely to connect and can't wait to see you in the studio.